Hello and welcome to another KSP Career episode with me. I'm your host Groundforks and you're watching at one of the first crafts that we have sent into an interplanetary space ever. And that is of course our Duna Science Lander. Uh, initially designed to be going to Duna. However, I realized that while it could theoretically go to Duna, its shield, heat shield was far too small and uh, its properties were not actually ideal to be able to go to Duna. So rather than Duna, I have decided now that I have my relay network in place, it will be going to Ike instead. So the idea is that we do a, basically an orbital you know, ejection burn from Duna to Ike. And we have a massive amounts of Delta V to consume, like four or five thousand. I was even thinking maybe this little fella could, in theory, do some experiments on Ike and then return even to, uh, you know, to Kerbin. I have not decided which route will be, but uh, for the time being, we are definitely gonna, not going to be using it for Duna, but for Ike rather. So. With that thing being said, we are just trying to find a decent burn and to basically get ourselves orbitally, let's say, fix the inclination with Ike and then we're gonna do the ejection towards Ike. So, okay, let's see, there we go. We should get an Ike encounter and we did. Okie doke, yeah, there we go. 726. I'm just trying to find a decent enough encounter that will give us a very nice orbit later on. So I think this is good enough. Let's just align or let's say maneuver prograde and then we're gonna go towards the burn. The burn time shall be three seconds, so very, very short, but effective, hopefully. There we go, and the burn will be in one minute. So Getting ready to eject. All right, three, two, one, and burn. Oh, okay, that was that was fast actually. So what are Ike periapses? Uh, let's see, six hundred and thirty-nine. I'm cool with that. Totally. Uh, yeah, it shows like as if if it's gonna hit Ike, but I don't think it will. All right, so let's see. Do we have anything? Uh, happening before that on our calendar. I don't think we have, which means we can enjoy and watch the transition to Ike. This craft, when launched, we were still playing with, uh, you know, the remote tech. So that's why I have these two big relays, because that was supposed to be the relay and the stuff below was supposed to be the lander itself. But since we removed this antenna, this became a direct connection antennas, thus rendering this craft unusable as a relay. So yeah, I'm gonna put Ike at kind of a low periapsis here. I'm thinking probably around 100-ish. It's still 161 meters per second, so it's kind of low. It's not a problem for this vessel. We have more than enough. <laughs> Look at the whole network of satellites we have around Duna. You would think that this thing we already know by heart how it looks, what it feels, what are the temperatures and whatnot. Technically we don't, those are just relays that have taken some scientific measurements, but all in all they will serve as a relay to get ensure that we have a full control over our lander craft when it comes. So, and the reason why I still haven't disconnected the top satellite is mainly because I need its relay or direct connection capability because everything is communicating through that little antenna that's in the middle of the two large antennas. So if I was to disconnect this relay or this craft, since it's no longer a relay, we could not relay the data and I would lose connection with the craft and couldn't steer it. So that's why I'm keeping both of these vessels on. Not like I, the user intended, but I'll take it, whatever. All right, so let's go with a maneuver node. That's gonna be another 135 meters per second to basically land on Ike. I mean, it's a go all in all, it will probably take roughly three to 400 meters per second, but this is just to basically deorbit. All right, I'm making sure that my experiments are running and I'm making sure that I point towards the maneuver prograde on the marker. 
There we go, beautiful. I'm going to add the new alarm just to be on the safe side. Look at it go. By the way, for those of you wondering which are these colors, meaning that some of the equipment failed already. So, <laughs> yeah, what can you do? All right, our burn will be in 58 seconds, and that's perfectly fine as long as we just point in the right direction. Make sure that we are ready for the burn, and then we'll do the burn. 20 seconds to the burn. Yeah, our periapsis is at the moment around 10, so that's actually quite low. However, I'm just lowering my periapsis ever so slightly. 10 by 50 or 60. I'm trying to find a, a landing spot that would both be able to connect from directly from Kerbin and also have the view over Duna. So that's kind of my hopes because then we have pretty pictures in terms of landing when we land on Duna, while at the same time we have connectivity back to Kerbin to ensure that we have, well, we don't crash simply. So. It's kind of hard to actually find the correct one, so come on. Will we have Duna Rise somewhere, please? And actually, I have a whole unconsumed stage, and I'm thinking on Ike, I'm probably going to land this thing on its engine bell rather than anything else, so... See? That guy. Oh, the Duna Rise is beautiful. All right, so I think... Okay, this time we're communicating with the relays. That's also good enough because we have lost the connection, direct connection to the KSE. That's still okay. So let's see, we go here. We are burning retrograde. And I'm thinking we're gonna go somewhere into this crater. I just hope that the Duna will be still visible in the night sky as we do it. All right. Finally getting rid of this big booster. I don't need it anymore. Just decoupling it ever so gently. It has a negative periapsis, so eventually it will come down and hit stuff. So I'm not overly concerned about that. See, it goes down. Eventually it will hit something. All right, so we are definitely going down now. We have more than enough Delta V, so I'm not overly concerned in terms of landing. Let's just see. Okay, we are eight kilometers. Oh, is Duna gonna go below the horizon? Oh, come on. I was hoping she would. it wouldn't. Okay, we are six kilometers up. Apparently I have misjudged this. Well, take a screeny while you still can, ground forks. Screeny, screeny. There we go. Ah, well, you cannot always get it right. All right. Maybe I'll choose another site later on. And for some reason, I don't have the Kerbal Engineer here, apparently. Maybe I wasn't putting these Kerbal Engineers back then. All right, now we are burning ever so slightly to reduce our surface velocity to say a more acceptable five or four-ish. We have, we do see our shadow and we have to be really careful because we are landing on the engine belt. So we don't have the stability of the legs or anything like it. And I don't know what the slope is either. It looks pretty flat to me, but we have to be really, really careful. I'm eyeballing it. So let's hope it, that it goes well. Come on, and there we go. Okay, the SAS manages to keep it on upwards. Perfect, that means 
Experiments galore. Let's just hit all the possible experiments and make sure that everything gets scanned as quickly as possible. By the way, guys, you know what to do. Smash that like button because that also brings me, gives me more coffee. So I'm even more interested and energetic in terms of producing content for you. So yeah, every like is an additional, you know, cup of coffee for me. Yeah. All right. So uh, mystery go observation as we are doing those, I was actually saving the mystery go observation to be able to first get the data of the surface of Ike. And we are sending the data from the surface of Ike. And th I think that's also one of the contracts that we had. So that's wonderful. Okay. And I'm going to get ready for the liftoff. See, gravity scan, mystery goo observations. Stuff is getting, you know, measured here. All right. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do, I'm going to take off and I'm going to go into a low orbit and then I'm going to decide later on if I'm going to go back from Duna back to Kerbin or I'm going to just plot another maneuver, let's say seven years somewhere in the vicinity, eight years. Okay, good. We're adding the alarm and when it happens, it happens. But for the time being, what we're going to do is we're going to once again ascend upwards as soon as this... Uh, measurements are done let's go upwards and we're burning at 90 degrees epilapses of 20 that's good enough and let's just add the maneuver node and we are definitely gonna go into the ike's orbit i'm thinking 20 by 20 that should be good enough let's point us you know, orbit prograde and we're going to burn. The total burn is 266 meters per second. So all in all, it's roughly 500 meters per second to, you know, get down and get up or 600 meters per second there about. All right, good. Yeah, that makes it so. So, yeah. We have landed on Ike, got some science, and now we are in the orbit around Ike once again doing the gravity scan experiments. But I think we're gonna wrap it up for this episode actually here, just trying to find a very nice place to end it up on the high note. And you guys know what to do. Hit that like button for me to get more coffee, and I will reconnect with me on all, all social networks. Thanks for watching. This is Groundforks.